Wow. It just makes you want to go back another time. <laughs> Hey, Sugar Geeks! Liz here and Christoph once again with a brand new tutorial. Today we are making a delicious pavlova with a berry filling and chantilly cream. With a little French twist. Okay, let's get it started. We're going to do a French meringue for this uh, beautiful mini pavlova today. What are you doing, Liz? I am cleaning the mixer for you, Chef, with vinegar. With vinegar? Yeah. To make sure that none of the butter residue is on any of the attachments so that your meringue whips up. So what kind of mixer are you using today? You never seen this mixer before? Uh, no. So this is the mixer we're gonna use today. It's called the Bosch. I have a plastic bowl and <laughs> a metal bowl. And I like it because it's open, right? So we'll, everybody can see what we're doing. Oh, it's a serving spoon, right? <laughs> this is the attachment for the top so that the bowl scrapes itself. So you get really good mixing and then two so that it mixes really fast. Oh wow, Voila. that's awesome. Yeah, it's really nice. So wait till you see it mix. So let's pour the egg white into our mixing bowl. Okay, with the whisk attachments. Yes, uh, then we add the cream of tartar mm -hmm. that will help on the stability of our meringue. If you don't have cream of tartar, because I know you're gonna ask, you can just leave it out. You could leave it out. Yeah, it just stabilizes the egg whites so they don't collapse and it keeps them extra white. That's right. So you turn the mixing bowl in uh, about medium speed and you let it whip. So we are mixing to a medium peak and uh, uh, that means uh, your, uh, uh, your meringue is uh, not really, really stiff but not too liquid right in the middle. So you can see some wave mm -hmm. starting to be created on the side and pretty stable. Mm -hmm. So that's a sign that we are in medium peak. Then we want to add the sugar progressively. So now we want to uh, whip it until a stiff peak, so okay. a little bit harder than what it was. Okay. All right, we're good. Can you show me how to take this apart, Liz? Mm. Okay. Mm. Yes. Mm. Oh. Now, what would happen if we didn't mix to stiff peaks? Would it just crumble it, it, or? You might have a chance to have a meringue that is pretty loose. Mm -hmm. And then you wouldn't be able to pipe it. Uh, is going to lose his, uh, his shape. Mm, okay. If it's too um, whipped too soft. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, the texture, right now the texture is perfect. Great. So now we are um, uh, transfer the egg white into a bowl so it's easier to mix the powder sugar. This is sifted, correct? Sifted powder sugar. Okay. Have you ever added like um, cocoa powder or like freeze dried fruits or anything to pavlova? I did add some cacao powder on a meringue. Actually freeze dried fruits, it's a really good way also to uh, uh, flavorize your, um, your pavlova. So yeah. just feel free to be creative when you bake, you know? Yeah. As long as you don't affect the consistency of your meringue, uh, then you can add some uh, flavor to it. A little bit of uh, coffee extract mm. or vanilla extract, vanilla bean. Can I put food coloring in here? You can put food coloring. So you added in half the powdered sugar, folded that until it was almost combined, and yes. then added the rest. Correct. And you see how I fold it? Mm -hmm. I don't want to over mix the meringue. Okay. So that's why I'm going like really delicately going. to don't lose the volume of your meringue and also get it liquid. You're folding carefully the whole time. Correct. All right, Liz, now we are transferring our uh, meringue into a piping bag with a uh, tip. Okay. Uh, this is a tip number 804. All right. Just kind of like a medium size round tip. Uh, yes. Would you use uh, anything that had ridges? Or? You could use uh, any kind of tip pretty much. That okay. meringue, you can make roses with it. You can... Uh, uh, you can do uh, uh, a star uh, tips and uh, create your own decor. So today I'm going to show you how to make a, a mini pavlova. Mm. However, you could use the same recipe at home to make a big portion mm. or uh, just being as much creative as you want. Again, this is a, just a basic and uh, I count on you to uh, uh, make work your, your creativity. Mm. So I'm going to pipe my meringue into the flexi mold. Uh, this one is about uh, one inch and a half. And we're going to pipe our meringue over the dome. So what's going to happen is uh, create a halo inside of the meringue. Mm -hmm. So this way 
that meringue when it's baked, that can be filled. And we're not doing every single spot, right? No, we're going to make one after another. Okay, give space. Right. One spaced. All right, and now I'm piping around it. And you don't breathe. <laughs> oh, cool. Voila. If you wanted to do a big meringue, would you just pipe this into a big circle onto like a silicone mat to make discs? If you want to do a big one, you could just take a star tip and pipe different ball all around it. Yeah, and, yeah. and then you can have a whole surface. Mm. So over here, we have a, a different kind of, uh, of mold. It's about one inch mold. So you stay, you stay in the center, you don't move your piping bag and you just press down. So the way we are holding a piping bag is you clip the piping bag this way. You turn it around your finger mm -hmm. and then you lift up. Okay. So this way, the feeling that you have inside is not gonna drip on a table, right? Okay. And now, before I even attempt to pipe, I want to make sure that my feeling inside the piping bag is pretty tight. Okay. So I will turn my piping bag I see. until it's getting really tight. Okay. Right? And then that hand will be the pushing hand. That hand will be the hand to say hello or just to guide. You are not pushing anything with this hand. You're pushing with this hand. Okay. So now when I'm going to pipe, I will stay in the center. Hold the bag like this. When you're talking to someone, your tip is up. When you're piping, your tip is down because sometimes the feeling is more liquid than the meringue and that will drip all over the mat. So you are holding your, um, uh, your tips, you go in the center, you don't move, you're about a quarter inch above the dome and then you press down. You stop pressing and then you turn. Wow. A quarter turn. I see. So Christoph had a magical idea as we were practicing these techniques. He thought, oh, you know, what we could do is pipe some meringue on top of the mold and make a long cake that's actually all attached but very easily to cut and serve to individual people, which I think is genius. So let's put our meringue in the oven at 190 Fahrenheit for about three to four hours. All right, Liz, so while our uh, pavlova are baking right now, we're going to start our mixed berry uh, compote. So the first things to do is to wash your berries. Uh, once your uh, berries are washed, then you want to uh, start to cut the stem of the strawberry. You can use strawberries you or, you, or you can substitute with uh, peaches and any kind of fruits mm. pretty much. So we're going to add the lemon juice in the pot. Then we want to add the sugar. We want to mix the lemon juice and the sugar. So then we want to cut our vanilla bean in two. Scrape the vanilla bean and then add the seeds and add the whole bean. So we are bringing this to a boil. Then we want to add our uh, mixed berries. All right, and then we want to mix, mix, mix. Now we are going to make our, how do you call it? Slurry. <laughs> Slurry. Pretty close. Which is a mix of water mm -hmm. and cornstarch. Cornstarch or clear gel. Then you mix your thoroughly. Mix, mix, mix. Okay, so once it's boiling, you add our swirly. <laughs> swirly? <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. No, I, just, ever. I enjoy it so Never. much. I enjoy it so much. And then we mix, mix, mix. Boom, boom, boom. Bada boom. All right, and just boil for about uh, 30 seconds. Yep. Just to activate your um, swirly. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, and Good. then we're going to cool this down. When you cool down your uh, mixed berry jam, you want to uh, protect it with uh, a wrap and cool down all the way. So we don't get a skin. And we'll put that in the fridge until we're ready to use it. All right, now we are about to make our uh, vanilla chantilly. Mm. Vanilla chantilly is going to be cream 
powder sugar and vanilla. A whipped cream, it's a cream that you whipped. Mm -hmm. a vanilla chantilly is a cream that you whipped and you add sugar and you add vanilla bean. Oh. That's a chantilly. A whipped cream, it's a whipped cream. All right, so to do the vanilla chantilly, we add the cream. Okay. If you would like to do something that is dairy free, you could use coconut milk. So I will take the can of the coconut milk and leave it overnight in the cooler. Mm. The liquid and the fat of the coconut milk will separate. You strain the liquid and you can whip the coconut fat mm. into a coconut whip. You want to add the powder sugar. You want to cut the vanilla bean in half. Then you scrape with your knife all the seeds from the vanilla bean. And then you want to mix the vanilla bean inside your cream with that amount of liquid. You, you want to reserve about 10% uh, of the cream inside a separate bowl in order to mix your uh, vanilla bean seeds. And then strain the vanilla bean Ooh. to remove all the fibers. And then you want to scrape mm. the fibers. And you see all of this, that's all the fibers yeah. that are, we are removing. Wow. So now we want to mix our ingredients into a firm consistency, but not curdle. It's in a medium speed. All right, our chantilly is ready. All right, so we are preparing our piping bag. A little uh, tips when uh, you're working with piping bag is before you are filling the piping bag, I like to take this plastic part and insert inside the tip that will avoid to have any drop of any product that you will put inside your piping bag. I'm using Chef Master's Natural Food Coloring. A little bit of rose pink, small amount. I don't want to mix too much because we don't want the, the cream to get curdled. And then this is a burgundy, very, very small amount. And then piping bag, I'm gonna do a little, it's called a rose tip, it's a Wilton 104. And then I'm gonna do a uh, little rosette for the darker color, this is an 18, which is a small star tip. And then the leaf tip, this is a 67. So now this is ready for when we are ready to pipe. Yes, so our pavlova are halfway baked because when you touch it, it feels pretty dry, mm -hmm. so meaning crunchy. Yes. And we want to have the whole entire uh, pavlova to be fully baked. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, because on the inside is not exposed to the air from the oven, it might be a little bit more humid in the center. So what do you want to do is to unmold the meringue and trying to feel this and actually it feels pretty dry right now. Mm -hmm. If not, I will recommend to leave it this way, standing up and put it back in the oven for about 30 minutes or an hour. At 190 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, your meringue will not over bake yes. because of the temperature is pretty consistent. Should I store these in any particular way to make sure that they don't get sticky? You will want to store your uh, pavlova into a container with desica gel, mm. limestone. Mm. The limestone will absorb the humidity that is in the air. Uh, and also you want to have a closed airtight container. Okay, this is our other little experiment. So if they are not done, we can put it back in the oven for another 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. That means it's not ready yet. Yes. Because we want to present uh, uh, this pretty flat on a, on a dish or on a, on a buffet, we're going to scrape the bottom of the pavlova with a microplane. Let's fill them with our mixed berry jam okay. now. All right, so we have our mixed berries that is cold now. Mm -hmm. Look at shiny this looks. So we're going to fill it all the way up? You don't want to put too much eh? because remember we're going to pipe it. Yes. And the idea is not to see what's in the inside. Mm. Keep it as a surprise. So for this one, I am going to pipe a little balls. Okay. We always want to uh, uh, represent our decor uh, to reflect the flavor of the product. You eat with your eyes first. Correct. So our eyeballs are like, what is in here? And then we're going to fill our other little fancy pavlova with the same berry filling. 
I'm going to scrape the bottom so that's nice and flat. And if it's broken, you can glue it together with a little bit of melted chocolate. So I'm thinking rows on the top of each one. Some small flour to go in between and a couple leaves. Wow. And voila, pretty beautiful little yes. pavlova. All right, Liz, let's try it. Wow. The pavlova is crisp on the outside, but then it just dissolves into like a soft center. And you get like the super sweet meringue and then the tartness from the berry. It just makes you want to go back another time. <laughs> if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and hit the little bell so you get a notification each time we come out with a new video. Until then, I'm Liz, this is Kristoff, and we will see you in the next video. Bye! Bye, Sugar Geeks! <laughs>